What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at what's been inside of my drone bag for the beginning of 2019. This is a video I like to try to update every single year just to keep you guys in the loop in terms of what I'm using and potentially to show you some things that you don't necessarily know about. I know that for me, I love to watch these kinds of videos just because I always end up finding one or two little things I had no idea even existed. And that's kind of the thing that I hope to share with you guys, again, in terms of what I bring with me inside of my every day bag. This is a bag I bring with me if I'm going to class, if I'm going down the street just to fly my drone, or if I'm going on a shoot because it's got pretty much everything that I need inside of it. Now pretty much anybody on YouTube who's in the photography, videography, or tech space has made a video similar to this one which kind of makes the topic overdone in a way, but I think I take a unique approach to the idea because I fly drones pretty much every day. I shoot all my photos and videos primarily on drones, so everything in my bag is pertaining to drone flying, which again, could make this a little bit more interesting than somebody who just shoots photos with a traditional DSLR. Now, I want to make a quick announcement, something I really haven't talked about on my YouTube channel, and that's the fact that I've started a podcast. I'm about 17 episodes deep right now with my co-host, Ken Dono. All of the topics are drone related. It is a drone podcast. It's about bettering your flying, bettering your shooting with your drones, and it just pertains to everything in the drone industry. So be sure to check it out. I'll leave the link down in the description. It's on YouTube. It's on SoundCloud. It's on Spreaker and it's also in the process of being approved for Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. But anyway, let's get on to check out what's inside of my bag. So kicking things off here, we have the bag itself, the Peak Design 20 liter everyday backpack. And I've been using this bag for a solid year now, and I don't think that I'm ever going to make the switch. Now the bag itself is actually fairly new because the zipper fell off and with Peak Design's lifetime warranty, I got a brand new one shipped right to my house. So not only is their customer service legendary, but so is the bag itself. It's durable, it's lightweight, it has the side pouch with adjustable inserts, it has handles on basically every single side. It just holds holds everything I need so perfectly and makes bring my stuff with me everywhere I go an absolute breeze. Now, I should probably mention that as well as it being my drone bag, it is my everyday backpack. I bring it to class with me. I bring it down the street when I fly my drone. I bring it with me on my boosted board. And speaking of my boosted board, I've fallen off of that thing going 20 miles an hour and I've landed straight on my backpack and everything inside is totally safe. So not only has it withstood, I mean, constant abuse every single day, but some pretty major accidents too, landing on it with all of my force and everything inside is perfectly fine. Oh yeah, and um, here is another cool thing about the backpack. You can suspend larger things on the outside, so I'll use this to carry larger drones like a Phantom 4 Pro, and I've used it once or twice to carry my Inspire 2, which it might not be the best idea, but it got the job done. All right, so now let's move on to what's actually inside of the bag, and I figured I'd start things off just with the drones that I carry. Yes, drones, multiple, plural. I carry two of them with me pretty much at all times. The first, the main one, is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. This is pretty much everybody's go-to at this point. And my secondary, my backup, is the DJI Mavic Air. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I like to carry around two of them, which means I've got to carry two drones, three batteries for each, so I get some good flight time, and also a controller for each. So while it takes up a lot of room in my bag, it also adds a good amount of weight. So the DJI Mavic 2 Pro is my go-to. It's always the one that I fly. But if I run out of batteries with this one, then I've got a whole second drone right here, all batteries charged, and this drone still got a great camera. It's still got great speed on it. So this is a great drone to fall back on. If again, I've shot with the Mavic 2 Pro all day long and I've just run out of battery. Also, there's always the fear of mine that my Mavic 2 Pro won't work and there will be something I want to shoot and I don't have anything to fall back on. So again, this comes in as a backup, but sometimes I like to feel this drone as I guess my starter and that is when I'm feeling a little bit risky and I want to fly in tight areas. So the Mavic 2 Pro is still pretty small, but the Mavic Air is a lot smaller and this is kind of like my stunt drone. So if I want to do some risky flying, say through some trees or through a tight space, that's when I bring out the Mavic Air. Next up inside of the bag is, of course, my computer. It's behind me actually right now recording the audio for this video. It is a late 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro, and I'll put up the specs here. It was pretty much fully specced out at the time. I went with the 2 terabyte SSD. I know it's pretty much totally overkill, but I figured I'd add as much storage in there as possible so I wouldn't have to deal with any sort of storage problems in the future as I'd like to store a lot of the files I'm working on right onto my SSD. It just makes things so much easier. This thing is pretty much my workhorse. It handles all my photo editing. It handles all my video editing. It handles my streaming, and it's still going strong, although I've noticed a couple of problems here and there with it. Again, it's pretty much used to death every single day. 
but it's my workhorse, it's a computer I use every single day, and what I carry around with me. Now to complement my MacBook Pro, I also carry around with me an iPad Mini 4, which will be getting the upgrade soon to the iPad Mini 5, as I can feel this thing just starting to get slow, but I'm waiting on a couple of things, and that will definitely be in my bag in a couple of weeks from now. Now, I've always been a sucker for iPads. I think that just the bigger iOS experience has always drew me in, and I use this primarily to sometimes edit photos, look at photos on a bigger screen. Also, sometimes I watch YouTube videos. I mean, this thing is a media consumption device for me, just again, on a bigger scale than the iPhone, and I know a lot of people love to fly their drones with the iPad, and I will if I'm using a Phantom 4 Pro or an Inspire 2, like a bigger drone, but with the drones I carry in my bag, like the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic Air, I just think it's a little bit silly to use such a a big tablet so I just throw my iPhone 10s Max right there on the bottom and I get going and that seems to work perfect for me again this is just kind of like a media consumption device for when I'm bored now I'm talking about shooting all these photos and videos with my drone while I'm out and to store all of my data I carry around two two terabyte lacy hard drives these are traditional spinning disk hard drives they're not SSDs I'd rather go with a cost-efficient way of storing my data on larger capacity drives rather than faster drives I don't care if I've got to wait say 10 or 20 minutes to throw everything on here I usually find something else else to do in that time and I know that Samsung makes their their newest drive with like a two terabyte capacity and it costs over a thousand dollars which is crazy I think I got each of these for like hundred fifty dollars again four terabytes compared to two terabytes over a thousand dollars in my opinion I'd rather go with more storage again so that I've got more than I need remember I've got two terabytes on my actual computer itself so I don't find myself falling back on these unless I need to like back something up and I'm really worried about losing something so these are more of like my backup plan but again I'd rather go with higher storage capacity rather than faster speeds and I don't want to break the bank now coming up on one of the first things that is not drone related inside of my bag I carry around with me the DJI Osmo Pocket. It's almost like a no-brainer to throw this thing inside of your bag. It's got a three-axis mechanical gimbal. It shoots 4K video at 60 frames per second. It is just, again, a no-brainer to keep inside. It's so dang small and does come in handy at certain times. Now, along with the Osmo Pocket, I carry around two accessories, which I think are like must-have accessories. The first is the wireless module, so I can simply just plug it into the bottom of the Osmo Pocket. I can leave it sitting there by itself. I don't need to plug in a device and I can just shoot a time lapse as I'm flying my drone. Again, I'm kind of doing two things at once. And another thing that I find extremely important to have with the Osmo Pocket is a smartphone holder. So this thing right here is actually designed to hold your phone. So you can slide your phone in here, attach the Osmo Pocket, and then you can put this thing on any tripod. So this allows you to get different angles uh, with your actual Osmo Pocket if you're taking a time lapse, or you can throw it on the Gorillapod back there, you can vlog with it. So this thing right here opens up a ton of different possibilities. All right, so I think that we pretty much went over all of the bigger items inside of my bag. Now it's time to get to some of the smaller items, but some of these smaller items are actually the things that make the biggest difference that you carry around with you. So the first thing, probably the most important, ND filters. I've got a ton of ND filters for both the DJI Mavic 2 Pro and the DJI Mavic Air. I'm using Polar Pro ND filters. They make the best glass in my opinion. And the Mavic 2 Pro has the adjustable aperture, so you can kind of get away with not using an ND filter. But the Mavic Air, an ND filter is a must because there is no adjustable aperture. Now, also, I carry around with me this little Pelican case, which carries around all of my SD cards inside of here. This thing is a lifesaver, right? Because if you didn't have this, you'd have to juggle around small little SD cards, put them in small pockets, keep them inside of your pocket, and you don't want to do that. Now, with all the devices that dominate my bag, I've also got a lot of charging solutions for each of the devices. So first up, I've got a DJI Mavic 2 Pro charger. I've also got the Mavic Air charger with me, so I don't have to worry about carrying around six dead batteries if I come up to an outlet, which is nice. Um, also, I've got the USB-C charging brick from the Google Pixel. I like to carry around two phones. Uh, you'll see a major theme of redundancy here in my bag. So if one thing goes down, I've got one to lean back on. I've carried around the iPhone XS Max and the Google Pixel 3, and one can be used for say a personal hotspot for my larger devices while the other can be used for phone calls and for text messaging and emailing so that is definitely helpful also I've got the MacBook Pro charger um, I usually try to keep this a little bit more neat when it's inside of my bag also I've got this anchor dual USB-C charging brick and in conjunction with this I've also got two nomad cables and the great thing about these is the one side is USB-A so I can charge off of this and then the other side is a micro USB 
a USB-C and a lightning. So I've got pretty much three cords in one. I don't have to carry around a ton of different charging solutions for all of my different smaller devices like the Mavic remote controller, the iPad and my iPhone and the Pixel. Um, also, I have got the Anchor Power Core. It, it, I think it's called the Power Core. It's a really big battery and I've been using this thing for probably two and a half years now. It's got three USB-A ports. It's got two micro USB inputs and it is just a total beast. It's 26,800 milliamp hours, and I never have to worry about any of my devices dying when I'm out on the road. Now, don't worry, I didn't forget about my actual camera that I use. It's the Sony a7 III. I'm shooting on it right now, but I don't actually put the camera inside of my backpack. I've got it suspended on the outside. I've got this small clip on my front left strap that's made by Peak Design and allows me to easily slide my camera in and out as I need it. It really does save space on the inside of my bag, and I don't have any worries of it falling down. Another thing I do, and this might be a little bit sketchy, is when I'm, say, vlogging and I need my Gorillapod, as well as the microphone I'm using, which is the Asden SMX30, I sling it around the strap on the left side from the Gorillapod. It's not the best way of doing things, but it actually does help you save space. It saves hands, so you don't have to carry it around, and I find it pretty effective. Now to wrap up this whole entire video, let's take a look through my junk pocket. It's a pocket at the top that holds a lot of smaller things, and these are the smallest objects I have inside my backpack, but sometimes they prove to be the most important. So first up, I have got moment lenses here. I've got the wide, I've got the macro, as well as the fisheye, and these are more for fun in my opinion. I love taking Instagram stories, wide angle Instagram stories with the wide angle lens, and of course I've got the moment case. So these are fun. I like to have them in my kit, and I think that they're the best option options for smartphone lenses. Now I've got a whole handful of stuff here. I've got like some extra AA batteries in here for my microphone. I've got a quarter because this allows you to tighten up some certain tripods. That's a big thing I'd recommend putting in your bag. Also, I've got the USB-C adapter for my Osmo Pocket. I've of course got the dongle for my MacBook because it's only got USB-C ports. I've also got things in here like a little tightener, like a little Allen wrench to tighten things up. I've also got a... Uh, an Osmo, or not an Osmo, a Mavic adapter. So you can actually put this onto your battery, your Mavic 2 battery, and then from there you get two USB ports. So if you need to, you can charge up any device off your Mavic 2 battery, and I like to keep this as a just in case. Also, I have got SD card readers. I've got stuff falling. So I carry around a ton of little cords, a ton of little dongles, kind of something I'd love to get over once we get to this full USB-C future. But for now, I've got my hands full of small little cords. But guys, that pretty much wraps up this entire video. All the links to everything I mentioned will be down in the description for, again, everything that's inside of my backpack. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments section. Also, let me know what you guys carry around because I'd love to, again, find some little things I can add to my bag to make my everyday life better. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.